action, that would be my preference. Joining us to discuss this is Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez of California, the second highest ranking Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee. Uh, Congresswoman, I know you're leaning no, but you have not firmly made up your mind. Are mixed messages like what we just heard? I've decided we're going to take action. I'd prefer not to take action. Is that causing you a problem when you make your decision or when you try to explain your thinking to your constituents? No, actually, um, the fact that uh, there might be a diplomatic way in which to end this crisis, as you all call it, I think is a great thing. I, I know that as I, we, we return today uh, in the House to vote for the first time since this all started, and there was a lot of discussion among members. That's the time where all 435 of us are in the chamber. And um, there was actually a very upbeat feeling about maybe there's a way to, um, to, 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 to tamper down what, is, you know, what has really escalated here. So I think that's a welcome thing to the Congress people. Um, the mixed messages, on the other hand, about uh, you, you had mentioned, um, Gloria, about uh, the president's interview tonight saying, for example, well, Syria can't come after us. Right. They're not strong enough. Well. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to war because you feel you have either been attacked or you feel an imminent threat to you. So his saying that, you know, they really can't do anything to us, I think kind of undercuts his own this message. whole issue of why we should be there. And, and what do you want to hear from him tomorrow night? What does he need to say to sway you to vote yes? Yeah. Uh, I need to have a better nexus, a better connection of why we need to basically attack this country because when we send a missile in that is an attack that is you know if you had if you were sitting at home and somebody fired a bullet through your front through your front window you would feel attacked i mean that's what we're talking about so what is the imminent danger to the united states what what is the national security issue please outline that for me and for the american people so we understand why we have to uh, set aside everything else we've tried or should be trying and go straight to a military and you, attack. you've been home in your district. What have you been hearing? Have people been at all, at all supportive of this? Are you hearing what a lot of your colleagues are telling us, which is that it's overwhelming opposition? And if that's the case, how hard would it be for you to vote effectively against what your constituents are telling you to do? Well, you're actually talking to somebody who voted against the Iraq War mm -hmm. when overwhelmingly, especially in my district, people wanted me they, to they vote wanted you yes. To, yeah. um, right. After I took that vote, I received death threats. I had to have bodyguards on me. Two years later, it was, oh, my God, you were right, and we're so sorry, we're so sorry. So let's say you voted for it, you decided to vote for it, and you, you have people opposing it so, now. So what I'm saying is that um, I, in this particular, in a particular issue of putting our military at stake, you're talking to someone who's married to a retired colonel from the Army and uh, has a son who's 19 years old who is in the U.S. Army. So, you know, when we, when we talk about going to war, and make no mistake, you shoot some missiles in. That's an act of war. That's so, an act of war. So, so, so you have to be, you, you know, you have, I have to, for me, I have to be able to look at a mom who loses a son or a daughter in a war, whether it's Iraq, Afghanistan, or Syria, and say, I'm sorry, there was nothing else I could do. So what I needed your child. Doesn't sound like you're there yet. I, I'm not there yet. S so what should the punishment be for the use of chemical weapons? If we back away. If the yeah, U.S. If backs we, away, they take we, this outlet. And we just remove his, you know, we come up with some arrangement where we remove his chemical weapons. Is that punishment? Well, I think it, it gives us where we want to be, which is to take those types, that, that type of ability away from him. That's what the president has said. The president said he's using chemical weapons on his own people. That's not justified, and we need to be able to stop him from doing that, deter him from doing that. If his chemical weapons are taken away and put in international hands or what have you, then effectively he cannot use And our them. credibility is fine then after that, given what has occurred well, well, in I the think, last few weeks. I think so. Would you I think rather the not world, vote? Would, no, I, 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 you know, you come to the Congress to take the hard votes. You don't come to the Congress to take the easy votes. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm lucky. I've been in the Congress for 17 years. I've been there. I've been on an Iraq war where everybody was beating the war drum. And I will tell you something. 
it is a lot easier to vote for war. So if you had to vote today, to vote how would you against vote? Against war. Well, right now, I haven't seen the nexus. So my answer, if you asked me today, I would have to say, uh, you know, I'm leaning no. I, as as I somebody who, who cast a, a no vote when the popular vote was yes with Iraq, mm -hmm. was, which was a tougher decision for you, Iraq or Syria? Because it sounds like you are where the population is, and Iraq was a much tougher vote. Than you know, Iraq. Iraq for me was easier um, because I understood in asking the questions and looking at the information and everything that there was not WMD. I mean, I really understood. You were against popular opinion. You know, I, I understand that. And, but, you know, I, I, I knew that I, I had a really good feel that they weren't there and therefore that was the and, right vote. This is a much more difficult and one. And in this case, because, your vote is bad. Because here, um, even though I made, uh, if, if I vote no, and 95%, at least 95% of the people I represent have been calling, you know, people have been calling and saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. There have been very few. I can count them on my hand. Phone calls or groups or people who have emailed me and said, please go forward and do this. This time you're voting against so, the president in your own party. So, well, and it's always difficult to vote against your own president. It's always difficult, not just of your party, but of your country, right? Right. And remember that there are far more, in my opinion, important things coming up on the docket. We have to settle the budget for the next year. We're talking about whether the government gets shut down. We're talking about food stamps right. for people who really need them. I need a strong president there. So well, do you think you have I'm sorry. So we need to cut it off there because we're running out of time. Thank you so much, Congress.